This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Well, glory to God. If you get, it feels funny up here. It feels funny with this uh, little podium. It's too skinny. You know, I like something <laughs> wide. I'm too wide for this little skinny podium. Uh, it's been, or should let Sean preach this morning. He could, I could have hid behind this. But I can't hide behind this, see? Sean, I could have, he could have stood, stood here and, and hid behind this. Uh, uh, hey, he's turned sideways, stick his tongue out and pass for a zipper. <laughs> I can't do that, Amen. <laughs> yeah, right, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. But uh, maybe one of these days. But if you got your Bible open, look with me in the book of Philippians this morning. Philippians chapter number three. Philippians chapter number. Philippians chapter number four. Let's go to Philippians chapter number four. Philippians four. I won't hold you real long this morning. Because somebody said there's some delicious food in the back. And somebody's having a party. And all the guests are invited to stay. There's plenty of food back there. And uh, praise God, we'll just eat it all up till it's all gone. Amen. And I uh, hope you'll stay. And uh, I'm going to be insulted if you leave. I'm going to think you don't love me. Ain't that right? Put on the pressure, preacher. Put it on. That's right. So I hope you'll stay in it. You got to eat. Hey, you got to eat. Amen. Uh, some people uh, eat to live, some people live to eat. But uh, regardless of what your motive is, you need to eat, amen? And I hope you can stay and be with us. We're going to have a wonderful time of fellowship. And, uh, and then if you've got a part in the, the program tonight, uh, the play in the program, right we get through, we need to get going and get, uh, get rehearsing and practice. We're going to spend the whole afternoon praying and uh, spending time in prayer and rehearsal and getting ready for tonight. And I want to encourage you once again... Get on the telephone this afternoon and invite everybody. Invite all your friends and enemies. And find the person you dislike the most and call that person and say, Hey, I just want to call and tell you, tell you I'd love for you to come go to church with me tonight. Shock them. You might shock them so much that they'll come, get right with God, and be the best friend you ever had. That's just the way it works sometimes. Amen. Call the person that you least think would come. The most unlikely person to come that's the one I want you to call. Pray about it before you do and call them. Amen. And see if you can get them in the house of God tonight. Amen. Praise God. I don't want anybody to go to hell, do you? Amen. Nobody. I, hey, I, my, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go to hell, would you? No, sir. I don't care what they've done. I don't care what they've said. Uh, I want to do everything in my power when I stand before God to say, hey, I've done what I could to try to keep them out of that awful place. So uh, you, you work hard for the meeting tonight, and uh, you'll be glad you did. When it's all said and done, you'll be glad you did. And, and uh, now I want to tell you, watch out this afternoon, because I've already heard that the devil don't like what we're doing tonight, and he's going to try to hinder you. He's going to try to, he's going to try every way to stop you from being here tonight. If he has his way, you'll stay at home and become a couch potato tonight. If, if you listen to the devil tonight, uh, and let him have his way, you're going you're gonna to lose out. You're going to lose a, a great blessing. And uh, let's work and labor and get them in here tonight. If you've got your Bible, Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians 4. Paul said, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudeus and beseech Sintetchi, that they be of the same mind. There must have been some discord, some confusion there between the brethren there in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Now, be careful there. It means don't be worrying. Don't be uh, the place where you're worrying and fretting over everything. Amen. 
uh, don't be so uh, cared about that. Amen? So be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thank, thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. And now I want us to skip over to verse number 13. Paul said, I can do all things, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now I want us to go down to verse number 19. He said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So with that reading in mind this morning, we have a package deal. I mean, we've got all that we need in Christ. I mean, everything. You say, well, preacher, I've got, hey, everything we need is in Jesus Christ. Everything. Praise God. He's the God that supplies. He's the God that loves you and cares for you and supplies all your needs this morning. What a great God he is. Let's go to the throne of grace. Brother Leon, you pray for me. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise God. When I think about how good God is, and I think about God's provisions, uh, and I just want to stop and praise God and thank the Lord this morning, because God's been taking care of me for a long, long time. God's been looking. You know what I believe? I even believe that before I got saved, I believe that the sovereign God of the universe, praise God, was watching over me, because in his omniscience, and his great mind, he could look down through time and he could see this old center boy kneeling on his knees at Carolina Baptist Church, January the 9th, 1977, and getting covered by the blood of Jesus. And in his great mind, I believe he protected me. Times that the devil would have killed me. Times that the devil would have thrown me into hell. Praise God, I believe Jesus kept me safe because he saw me coming, hallelujah. Praise God, what a great God he is. And uh, I believe he provided protection even then. Even when I was wicked and vile and undone and no thoughts of God, no concern of him, praise God. I'm glad God's not on an ego trip. I'm glad God's not hung up on all that. Praise God, he would have thrown me into hell with the attitude I had and the lifestyle I was living. But thank God, I'm glad that he's a sovereign, omniscient God that knows all and sees all. Praise God, and he was taking care of me. And praise God, he's really been taking care of me ever since I've been saved. I'm telling you, God watches over his youngins. Praise God, God cares for his own. Praise God, and I'm telling you what the Bible says. Hallelujah, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Praise God. Now, I remember when I got saved and I remember I was in a college prayer meeting and Brother Buford Paris called on me to pray. And uh, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to die right here. I'm going to have a cardiac arrest. And I started praying. And uh, I, I got locked jaw. And I, uh, 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 and I couldn't say a word. Man, I couldn't say a word. And I could hear all the older brethren around me saying, bless him, Lord. Help him, Lord. And I said, oh, dear God, please help me. And all of a sudden, God, God let me let it break through. And I got on, got that prayer out. And I remember the first time I just stood up to testify and say, I thank God for saving me. I felt like my heart was going to beat out of my chest. And, uh, and uh, when God began uh, working in my life, I'm telling you, God will provide what you need. God will help you 
you. Uh, listen, God's not interested in your ability. He's interested in your availability. And we can never stress that enough because the great God, hallelujah, that calls, the great God that called us into the salvation, that calls us into the ministry, calls us into any type of work for him, is the God that will qualify you and the God that will supply what you need and help you and give you the grace and the ability. And without him, it's all fruitless. It's all sounding brass. It's all tinkling cymbal. But thank God, my God, Paul said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. And he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do nothing on my own. You take away my Bible, I can't do nothing. Can't do a thing without the Bible. Praise God. These preachers are preaching something. I don't know how they do it, man. Uh, Got to have the word of God. Amen. Praise God. There's power in the word. Praise God. Wonder working power in this blessed old King James Bible. This word of God. Amen. Praise God. But God supplies. Uh, he was able, praise God, to supply from the beginning. I mean, he's, after all, he's the God that made everything out of nothing. Now, man makes some, uh, some uh, wondrous things. When we went to New York City, and I walked out, come up out of that subway, and I saw everybody else look on their face also. When we come up out of the subway and stepped up on Times Square, praise God, and saw all those gigantic buildings, and saw all those bright lights, praise God, and saw, man, it was just, it was just amazing to see what man had created, to see, see what a metropolis, what a city uh, that man could construct or build and see those beautiful structures and buildings and, and the glory of that city. And certainly you have to say that if you've ever been there, and especially, praise God, you come from a place like Spartanburg and never been in a city like that and come up just out of the subway and, and all of a sudden you pop out there and there it is, man, there it is. There's the Empire State Building and all these other great uh, uh, gigantic buildings and beautiful, all the lights flashing and the giant TV screens they have now with, with all the lights and the, the glory of it. But you just think when we get home to heaven, that's the way it's going to be. I, I thought about that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God that we're going to be traveling, sojourning here below, sort of like we was on that subway. And all of a sudden, praise God, we're going to exit, praise God. And when we step out, hey, you think stepping out on the streets of New York was something? You wait till we step out on the streets of glory, my friend. You talking about having a time. And the Bible says, but my God shall supply all your need. And he says we need a, a, a beautiful city called heaven. And the Bible tells us in John 14 that he's got it prepared for his youngins. Amen. What a time. But he, he provides, he's always provided uh, the quartermaster general, he took and he done a, a statistics on what it would have took for God to take care of the children of Israel and, and the wilderness. Have you ever thought about when Moses went down into Egypt, working the miracles of God and bringing the children of Israel out? Have you ever thought what it, what it took to feed all those Jews in the wilderness? Well, you know, we, we picture, you know, when Moses struck the rock with the uh, staff and the water gushed out, you know, and we see, we picture in our mind there's maybe a few hundred or a thousand, a few thousand around there. But you realize there was over two million Jews that he led out of bondage? Right. Two million people that he led out, probably a whole lot more than that. But at least two million that he led out of Egypt, man, with all the beast of burden. Praise God and everything that they were bringing out and all the cattle and everything else that they brought out with them. Can you imagine that multitude as they exit out of Egypt? Praise God. And the Bible says that God sustained them and God took care of them not one day, not two days, not three days, not two months, three months, four months, five years, six years. No, but listen, for 40 years he took care of them. For 40 long years he fed them with manna from heaven. For 40 years, praise God, he furnished them a table in the wilderness and took care of them. And I want to report to you that God's still alive and he's still on the throne, praise Praise God, and he's still in control, and he's able to take care of you this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Praise God. 
To get an idea of what supplies it took, the quartermaster general of the U.S. Army was asked to figure out everything. And according to him, Moses would have had to have 1,500 tons of food each day to feed such a multitude. Do you realize that to bring that great amount of food every day would have required two freight trains, each being a mile long? In the desert, they would have needed firewood to use in cooking the food. This would have taken 4,000 tons of wood and a few more freight trains, each a mile long, just for one day's cooking. And just remember, these Jewish people were there for 40 years in transit, and God was caring for them. Oh yes, they would have had to have water. If they only had enough to drink and to wash a few dishes, it would have taken 11 million gallons of water every day, and a freight train with tank cars 1,800 miles long just to provide the water. And don't forget, they crossed the Red Sea also. And if they went on a narrow path, double file, the line would have been 800 miles long and would have required 35 days and nights to cross over. So there must have been a space three miles wide. This meant they could walk 5,000 abreast and could cross over in one day or night. But there was another problem. Every time they camped at the end of a day, a campground two-thirds the size of the state of Rhode Island was needed and a total of 750 square miles long. This is just space required for camping every night. Do you think Moses figured all this out before he left Egypt and the children of Israel? No, he just believed God. Just believe God. I'm telling you, God's able. We're living a day when people fret and worry and say, well, can we do this? Is this in our budget? Can we make it? Praise God. What's wrong with just believing God's able to supply? I believe where God guides, God provides, and God's able to take care of his own. Praise God. He's been providing and taking care of us a long, long time. Praise God. And I believe, hallelujah, he's going to see us all the way through to the end. Amen. Amen. What a great God we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's going to supply to all your needs. Just lean on him. Praise God. He'll take care of all your physical needs. Take care of all your family needs. Praise God. We just learn to rely on him and trust him. Praise God. He can fix it. Amen. Praise God. Whatever troubles you got, whatever problem, your, let me tell you, your troubles and your problems, they're not too big for God. Amen. <laughs> How big is God? Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got Dusty and Carrie in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. You and me, sister, in his hands. You and me, sister, in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hmm. He got the little bitty babies in his hand. He got them all. I'm telling you, he's still in control. Amen. What a great God we serve. Praise God. So why in the world would you want to go back? What in the, what in the world do you have to go back to? And give up on God when we have, we, uh, he's made us all these great promises. We've got a lot to rejoice in. Amen. We got a perfect book from cover to cover. And I rejoice in that. And I'm, I am, let me tell you something, I'm offended. That NIV crowd, New American Standard Version crowd, they offend me. They try to talk down that book. They try to tell me that book's got flaws in it. That book's got errors. That sorry bunch offends me. I believe a perfect God got a perfect book. I believe we got a perfect book. I believe, thank God, we got a perfect salvation. Praise God, I believe when the blood of Jesus Christ was shed and the blood was put on the altar and he said it's finished, praise God, it's a done deal. Uh, and that crowd that says you can lose it offend me. I just believe the Bible, amen. Let God be true and every, every man alive. We got a perfect savior. 
Savior, praise God. Jesus never sinned, never will sin. He was this perfect, spotless Lamb of God. The, uh, hey, I'm telling you, God incarnate, dwelt among men, lived a sinless life, praise God, died for my sins, ascended back to heaven, put his blood on the altar, and we have a perfect salvation. Amen. And that crowd that don't go, that offends me. They try to downplay the miracles of God. Uh, I tell you, we got a God who's able, praise God. Hallelujah. How about you? Do you believe God? I'm just, I just said all that to say this. I just believe God. How about you? Let's stand. What a great God. Amen. We have something we want to do for you this morning. Let's have everyone see it, except the ones that's going to be in the, in the program. If you will, uh, everyone who's going to be in the program tonight or has a part in the program, will you come join us? Come on, girls. Y'all go have a part in the program tonight. Come on. <laughs> 